We are down in my deep, dark, dingy basement, and this is the current unit that we're working with here. It's a is a Richmond, <clears throat> made by Ream, 40 gallon natural gas. Your standard big box store sold uh, 40 gallon water heater, and this one I've replaced this unit already twice. I think the first time. And when we bought the house, it was under warranty. I got a free one, put a new one in, and then that one finally died, and then I put this one in. These things typically last about six years. The warranty on this is six years. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had about three, so it's got three. Still, it's still fully working, works great, but it's. Um, but the reason I'm replacing it is because of a remodel I did in the upstairs bathroom, which I'll show you a picture of. We, I put in a new jetted tub, and um, it requires a little, uh, well, it's got three-quarter inch piping to it, and it and the uh, faucet that I put on there, which you'll see in the picture, is a full three-quarter inch valve fa um, you know, faucet. It can do probably about seven gallons per minute. When you open that hot water valve on that tub upstairs, and you let this thing flow in, it'll drain this thing real quick. You will, you'll get about halfway... Uh, to where you need the water level to be before hot water gives out. So this thing is just, um, you know, we've got four people in our house. We've got, you know, washer and dryer, all that stuff. But this thing barely keeps up with that. So we're going to go with the tank, the tankless unit that I'm about to show you. Here's the unit I replaced it with. It's another Richmond made by Ream. Ultimately, when I was researching on these things, the best ones were, I think, Navian. Navient or Navian uh, was the better one. Has a fully stainless steel exchanger, a uh, heat exchange. Um, the problem I have with those is they were a f probably at, at all said and done about uh, for for a notice that that's uh, almost a two twenty thousand two hundred thousand BTU unit at a nine point five gallons per minute. The same specs on a Navient would have been, I think, somewhere between sixteen and eighteen hundred dollars. This one was a right around a thousand dollars on sale at Menard. Plus it, it vents the, the vents here are two inch, uh, like a high efficiency furnace, so I can run double two inch piping. The other one the Navian would have been three inch, so I had to get a concentric pipe that would have been an extra eighty bucks. All said and done, I couldn't justify the extra eighteen hundred dollars or sorry, $800 approximately for, for that Navian unit. Now the Navians are, do have a 15 year warranty. These have a 12 year heat exchanger warranty. So I don't know, we'll see. Now the big thing when it comes to sizing, and I talked to a, and I'm not an expert on these things. This will be my first one installing. I talked to a rep at Ferguson and he, to try to size one, you know, you'll see stuff like this. Well, four bathrooms, uh, we only have two full bathrooms, and 9.5 gallons per minute. Well, if you look at the specs on these things, what you really need to look at is, you know, of course, and actually they kind of tell you this here, where mm -hmm. you are in the U.S., mm -hmm. we're up here in the Chicago area. Um, so it really comes down to how much water do you need to run at one time, right? So if I'm running that tub that has approximately seven gallons, uh, my uh, jacuzzi tub that has a seven gallon per minute flow, and this thing can handle 9.5 gallons at a 45 degree uh, temperature increase, it should be able to keep up with that tub no problem. Now, the only thing that you have to be worried about with, with regard to where you live in the United States, how cold you are is, um, for example, I was going to look at the, the smaller Navian that was, I think, $1,400, and it was a 150,000 BTU as opposed to the 200,000, and I think it was a 6.5 gallons per minute. Now, you say 6.5, that's probably good enough to do that tub, yeah, but that was 6.5 at 45 degrees. Now, if you go to a 75-degree water increase, which in the winter time our water is coming in from the underground, is going to be much cooler. And so you might have to go up 75 degrees, not just 50 or 60 degrees. So the gallon per minute flow at that rate, at a 75 degree increase, is much smaller. So I went with a little bit higher oversized unit because we are up north and our groundwater in the winter is a lot colder. Now the other thing you have to be aware of, let me just kind of go back over here, is at first I was like, oh, okay, well I'll just go ahead and install it you know basically where the water heater is you know I've got my pipes already done and I've got my vent already there nope you cannot do that for the most part 
these new units here are high efficiency, they are more like high efficiency furnaces where they don't have the single metal exhaust. They have a fresh air intake and an exhaust that use Schedule 40 PVC, just like a high efficiency furnace. So because this is kind of in the middle of this basement area, and not only that, but they hang, right? So these are wall mount. I can't really wall mount it to my chimney. I, I don't want to mess up this 100 year old brick. Uh, I could potentially wall mount it over here, but then the problem there is I've got to deal with being farther from the exterior wall, which is behind my electrical panel. See back here, which is a kind of a messed up uh, casement window, but that's where I'm going to be venting it out. Um, eventually, I may put a better piece of plywood over that, but for now, we'll just vent it out there. So that would put me further in the in venting. I'd have to run through all this stuff, and I've got all this electrical panel stuff here. So. What I decided was I would move it over to here, right here above. Um, so uh, see how we have a, a concrete ledge right here. I've got this utility sink and I've got this concrete ledge. And then I figure what I could do is do some framing right here and put it right behind the sink. And what's nice about this is if I want to do maintenance on it and I need to drain it down, I could just drain it right down into the utility sink. So, or even put the pressure relief valve plumbing right into the utility sink. So I don't have to worry about, you know, being away from a pit. The other thing is, is I can run my PVC two inch lines right out here. And that's a pretty short run. It's probably about six feet over uh, a couple feet this way. So, all, all said and done, you know, less than, you know, 10, 12 feet of, of PVC run. Um, two inch would be more than in the bounds of doing those two inch runs. So I'm going to put it right here, uh, right next to, in front of my um, upstairs bathroom uh, drain. Uh, hopefully it fits, you know, my water. I don't have to move my, um, uh, my dehumidifier, but whatever, that's fine. So I'll put it right here. I'll do some measurements and I'll show you when I start getting the framing done. Before I start framing and uh, before I realize I'm going to run out of headroom because I do have kind of a small space here. I don't have a full wall here. What I thought I'd do is mock up on the floor what this is all going to look like so I know I've got the right dimensions and I'm not going to um, run into trouble hitting the bottom of the wall or the top of the ceiling and not having everything to fit. The other thing I take note is the additional things I bought obviously are um, you know, two inch PVC fittings, two inch PVC pipe, some framing materials. Um, but the most expensive add-on I had to purchase was, or I, didn't, I guess I didn't have to, but I, I was told you should, is this uh, water heater valve kit. What this allows you to do is, I mean, not only gives you valves, but what it allows you to do is do is do regular maintenance on this unit because you have a you have a shutoff valve uh, to the water, but then you also have these valves that allow you to do the descaling and draining of the unit. Also, and they come with nice uh, brass caps on the cold and on the hot side, so it makes it nice. It also includes a, a pressure valve, a relief valve, um, but the unit actually did come with. A um, an inlet, you know, a nice um, MPT three quarter inch valve, and um, and a pressure relief valve. So this is not necessary, I, but I'll just keep one of them. Um, I'm sure I can use these for other purposes. I'm doing lots of plumbing all the time. This would make a great main line, uh, you know, uh, valve for for anybody who's just wanting to replace their, you know, their main line, uh, main shutoff, house shutoff. So this would make a good valve. I'll, I'll keep, hang on to that. So I'm going to install these things onto the bottom and I'm going to mock up at least the PVC elbows that are going to come off the top. And then we'll kind of see if that'll all fit. If not, then I've got to figure something else out. We'll let you know. Okay. Well, I mocked everything up on the floor here and let's see what we have. So for exhaust and air intake, um, cut a couple little pieces of two inch, uh, but probably yeah, probably a two inch piece of two inch uh, uh, PVC, and we have 90, uh, 90 degree two inch long long sweep elbows. Make sure you don't get um, make sure you get the long sweep elbows and not the tight elbows. And then on the back here, in order to offset it, 
put another little piece of two inch here and a 45. So what it'll look like is those two pipes will come off uh, from the top, 90 degrees. So after looking at that, I need about nine and a half inches of space conservatively, maybe nine inches will do from the top. And I'll have to really actually measure from the bracket hanger, which is in the back here, um, which is like somewhere there. So I'll take a measurement off the bracket hanger to the top and make sure I have the clearance at the, at the top. Now the problem is, is everything comes out the bottom. And that's where I don't have a lot of room. So I think what I measured, and here's the mock-up of those, all the valves installed. So you have your, this, this is your drain. Here's the uh, um, the uh, pressure relief, and that's the hot side. So, and then here's the gas line. I'll put I'll probably run full three quarter uh, solid pipe. I'll put a drip leg here, but I think my longest run will be here, where this is a three quarter inch MBT elbow that I'll uh, in a union right here. I'll probably come off this with a ninety. Um, right around here. So I think I measured total. I need about 46 inches from uh, the top of that to the bottom here to make sure I have plenty of clearance. And of course with the gas line it will come down. I'll do a little drip leg but I should have plenty of room for that. This is my problem, uh, the hot side. You know, so I need 46 inches of space. So therefore I only have 42 inches from that top jo the from you know the the flooring uh, flooring joist to the uh, to the sill right here that I was going to mount it, so I'm still going to do that. But the change of plan is instead of mounting it far back like I was hoping to do, and really have it kind of come flush to here, I simply can't do that. Um, I I'm going to need more room down here behind this uh, or on the front of this wall, but it looks like I should have plenty of room here. I might consider rerouting the cold water line that goes to my utility sink. Maybe running it up and around like the hot water one go and just kind of come down here. I don't know if I'll need to do that, but what I need to do is make sure the unit comes in front of and so those, that piping uh, comes down here and has plenty of room down here for me to get all the fittings in and it's still out of the way. So. That's the plan now. Uh, not ideal, but when you have a hundred year old house, nothing is. Okay, so I started the framing just so you can see the process. I won't show it in real time, but basically cut a couple 19 inch pieces of uh, block, two by four blocking, uh, attach the one up at the top first, and then I'm just leveling and plumbing everything so I know where to attach the bottom one. Now since the bottom one's going against this rock ledge, I'm going to use some Tapcom bits so I've got my masonry drill, my hammer drill right here, and I don't need to show you that because I don't have an extra hand to hold it, but once I plumb in the board and I kind of set the center there, I'm going to drill down in here uh, into the con and then, you know, what I can do is drill it, mark it, kind of move it, finish out the hole, and then move on to the other side, same deal, you know, mark it, finish out the hole. The frame is done. Uh, just once again, just I used uh, a couple, three, four inch tap cons, drilled into the concrete, and just screwed everything else together. Put a couple cross braces in, 16 inches. Um, this one I actually kind of measured and marked what what I'm hoping will happen. And uh, from according to my measurements, is this is where the bracket will lay or be screwed into and so not only will it go into the the plywood that's going to be in front of this but it'll also screw into that cross brace so next step uh put three quarter inch cut plywood i've got some scrap stuff i'll just cut it up all righty well i got that scrap piece of plywood that i found in my garage i know it's a weird color it looks like it's been stained or something and i mounted the bracket i just uh marked where i wanted it um 
you know, where it just gives me room to work with the pipes, hopefully. But I'm gonna go ahead and mount the unit without the, you know, take the pipes and stuff off. I just ran a little screw into it and leveled it. So I'm gonna go dig through the hardware that it came with. I'm assuming they want me to drive some pretty decent lag bolts into there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and find those, maybe drive a couple more screws in across the bottom and then attempt to hang the unit. Now the, the unit hangs, as you can imagine, once you get the bracket on there, these, these little, it just, you basically line it up and it's like dropping, you basically just drop it into these little, these little hanger tabs. Uh, they match up with, uh, let me just see if I can, see if I can lift it up and show you. They match up with those, those tabs on the back. So it's sort of like hanging a picture, only a really, really heavy 80 pound picture. So I'll let you know when I get my older son down here and we get this thing mounted. I don't know guys, I think I can claim success on this. Got it hung, got plenty of room up, up at the top. I, I realized that I needed to make sure I had plenty of room to get these pipes in and out, you know, I, rather than being like right up against the wall and not being able to adjust these. I might've gone too far. I could've probably gone up another inch, but we're good because at the bottom here, got this bottom I didn't I almost didn't even notice this bottom flange here so a couple more screws in the bottom flange and uh, but we still got a you know a couple inches from the, the from the base there and um, I mean these things are you know an inch or so off the wall so plenty of room to run you know the gas pipe I got a good good probably 10 inches right there and uh, I've, I don't know I think that's pretty good I got a good amount of clearance here probably good eight six eight inches right here anyway that's a wrap we've got it hung and the next part of the series uh, this series on the tankless water heater will be running the fresh air and and um, exhaust we'll see you on the next one thanks